This is why you should never do what these people are doing. Standing too close to a whale that's passed is a good way to get your ticket punched with him. When a whale dies, its insides start rotting, producing a bunch of gases like methane. And if the gas can't find a way out, the methane builds up inside the whale's corpse, turning into a blubber ticking bomb. Because a bloated whale could straight up explode, launching its guts at 45 miles per hour and airmailing its insides up to 160 feet away. This explosion is so powerful, not only can it shower you in whale guts, but if you're standing right next to it, it can severely injure you if not put you in a coffin right next to it. And if you're stupid enough to climb on top of the whale, which some people have, you can actually get launched into the air. The worst part is, either the gas will find a way to leak outside of the whale, or it'll cause an explosion, and the average person has no way of knowing which will happen. Once in Taiwan, researchers were transporting a dead sperm whale when it randomly blew up, covering people, buildings, and cars in flesh and guts. Nobody got hurt, but I'm sure therapists made a killing that year. In 1970, people decided to euthanize a dying whale with dynamite. Don't ask me why the f they did that, the 70s were a weird time. Not only did people get covered in guts, one car got flattened. Facts, no printer, cloudy with meatballs. Daisy, Daisy. This is the first time I can say this about something in the ocean, but what you just saw is 100% completely harmless. Even though its closest cousin is a great white shark, this leviathan come to life is a basking shark. Even though they grow to 26 feet long and the biggest one ever caught was 40 feet, they eat nothing but plankton, so there's zero threat unless you work in the chum bucket and have a computer for a wife. They got their name because you can usually find them feeding at the surface of the water and they look like they're basking in the sun. They also look a lot like great white sharks, so whenever somebody claims to see Megalodon, what they really bumped into was a basky minding its own business. They look like they're in a constant state of shock because they filter out plankton from the water and then pass that water through their gills. Their mass is pushovers and some will even curiously circle divers. The only slightly dangerous thing about them is they can weigh up to 11,000 pounds and in 1937 one accidentally capsized a ship drowning three people. But we've actually done this pog shark way worse and because of overfishing they're starting to shrink in size. But for the most part they're perfectly harmless. And in an ocean full of R-rated nonsense this Kirby guppy is the best you're gonna get. This thing is actually real. Scientists discovered it 3,000 feet below the surface off the coast of California. And even though it looks like a C- minus arts and craft project it's an actual animal called the Rosia Pacifica bobtail squid, but everyone calls it the stubby squid. Even though it's not an actual squid, it's actually closer to cuttlefish. The stubby is only four inches long and spends most of the day buried in the sand with only those meme eyes exposed. Dead eyes hunts at night eating crabs, mollusks, and small fish. But if you told me they feed on the innocence of small children, I still wouldn't take this anime face squid seriously. And if you think I'm being mean, go on YouTube and find the video where they found it. Not even Hiroshima got roasted as hard as he did. But in all semi-seriousness, it's actually really important because they change colors based on how polluted the water around them is, making them really useful for scientists. As for the bug eyes, the big eyes help them gather what little light they can at the bottom of the ocean. Either that or Squidward popped a mean one and hit the ninth dimension. That is a Tamando, what's a type of anteater found throughout South America as well as Trinidad. Shout out to Trinidad. Now the T posing. Yeah, that's a threat. Let me explain. Anteaters eat ants and termites and to get to them they'll break into ants nests and termite mounts and for the record termite mounts can be as strong as cement they break through them with their claws so on press ant eaters like the tomando will like to remind whoever's chasing them that they have claws and to rethink their life choices before they lose them and you don't want no smoke with an ant eater of any kind because those claws are the reason they're the only animals that jaguars will hesitate to attack because they could get one shot by them Eaters have been known to severely maul people by slashing them and tearing their organs out. One hit could puncture your lung, damage your liver, and even tear your stomach open. This is what happens when an anteater wakes up feeling homicidal. Manduas are smaller, but they're just as mean and just as likely to throw hands, and since they're legally blind, they treat anything that moves as a possible threat. Moral of this video, do not mess with the ant Top 5 animals that break the rules of nature. At number 5 is this lizard, because every whip-tailed lizard alive is female, all the males got cancelled permanently. The females reproduce by basically cloning themselves. At 4 is the clownfish, because every single one born is a male, they only transition to the other side if the dominant female becomes a pack. So the biggest male becomes a new dominant female and then mates with whatever males in the area, and yes I just described the R-rated version of Finding Nemo. Number 3 is the wood frog, because they can be frozen alive for weeks and walk it off like it's nothing, because they basically have built-in antifreeze in their blood that keeps ice crystals from forming in their cells. In the face of death, it arises like Frog Christ. And speaking of coming back from the dead is the water bear, because honestly, they're broken. They can survive extreme heat, extreme cold, radiation, a nuclear war, they can even vibe out in space because why the f not? They can also go into suspended animation that lasts over a hundred years. This moss pig takes a stress nap that lasts over a century without food or water and nobody should have that much power. Number one is the platypus because nothing makes sense about this duck rabbit. They lay eggs, sweat milk, they have no teeth or stomach, they swim blind to death and they find prey by tracking electricity like sharks. And they're highly venomous because of course. This is what happens when you leak a rough draft. You would not want to be reincarnated as these animals. First is a scorpion and if you're wondering why, it's horrible character design. Because if it loses its stinger, it also loses its anus, meaning even if it survives being crippled, it'll die a slow, painful, constipated death. Next is a seal because they get violated by everything. If you're not getting slapped up by an orca, griefed by a great white, or assaulted by Otter Cosby, you can get your eyeballs gouged out by a disrespectful seagull. Also, baby elephant seals have to try not to get crushed into a chalk outline by the mother's bigger, more aggressive boyfriend. Other seals aren't that great either, because the mother harp seal will abandon her baby after 12 days, even though it can't swim or feed itself. Next are hyenas for one reason. That's a female. 
connect the dots. Not only do they suffer one of the most painful births of any animal, male hyenas get treated worse than dirt. Males get kicked out of their birth clan at 2 years old and they have to get severely bullied and hazed just to join a new one. Literally the moment he's born his infant baby sisters will try to abort him. Male, female, either way hyenas got it bad and that is equality. And last is this poor guy. As if life wasn't hard enough, this wild pig could get folded by its own skeleton. The Babarus's teeth can grow into its skull and kill it. It's a horrible way to live and a worse way to die. Animals you would not want to be reincarnated as, part 2. Ferrets, because if you're a female, you get two choices. If you go into heat but don't eventually get laid, you could expire to a plastic anemia. But if you do get to mate, the process involves you getting mauled, grabbed around the neck, and dragged across the room like you're owing money. Because in a whole move from nature, domestic violence actually stimulates ovulation, so the only way to get pregnant is to survive 50 shades of ferret. And speaking of middle fingers from nature, you would not want to be an adult mayfly for the simple fact that they don't have a mouth. And it's not like they just weren't born with them, no, they lose it as they mature, and their digestive system is filled with air and disappointment. You might be wondering how any animal lives like this, and the answer is simple. They don't. They cash in their V-card and become an obituary by the end of the day because nature went above and beyond to screw them. Sloths, because that nightmare you have where you try to run but everything's in slow motion is their entire existence. Baby sloths have to literally hold on for dear life because if the baby falls, you can almost guarantee the mother isn't going back down for it. Leaving the tree is the most dangerous part of a sloth's life and since the mother can always have more, she'll just leave the baby to die. That is the worst kind of baby shower. They only poop once a week and climbing down the tree to do this is how half of sloth fatalities happen. Three animals you should legitimately be afraid of. Number one is the assassin bug because even though most people have never heard of it, they kill about 12,000 people a year. They're also called the kissing bug because they have a nasty habit of biting the lips and faces of sleeping people and then defecating into wounds, passing on a parasite that can cause Chagas disease. This parasite can cause headaches, fever, and swelling, and 45% of people with chronic symptoms develop heart disease which can lead to heart failure. You can also suffer digestive complications and nerve damage, and it's believed 6 million people carry it right now. Number two are snails because they're responsible for well over 200,000 obituaries a year thanks to a nasty parasite of their own. Freshwater snails carry a parasitic worm that can cause schistosomiasis. Symptoms include excruciating abdominal pain, bloody urine and stool, and even kidney failure and liver damage. These parasites allegedly live rent free in about 240 million people and a lot of them have no idea. Number 3 are worms because an estimated 3.5 billion people carry parasitic worms and a lot of them will never know. One of the worst ones are filarial worms because they can cause fluid to build up, resulting in a disease where your leg becomes the same size as an elephant's and it's called elephantiasis. It can also affect another body part and you do not want to google Other alligators care about their baby so much that they actually talk to them while they're still in the eggs. Mama gator will build a nest, bury the eggs, and then guard them with her life for about two months and she'll even go without eating for weeks just so she doesn't have to leave them alone. When the baby alligators are ready to hatch, they'll crowd to the mother while inside the egg, and the mother will immediately dig them out. The babies will even start chirping from inside the egg just so the siblings can synchronize and make sure they all hatch at the same time. And if one of the babies has trouble hatching, it'll crowd to its mother while inside the egg, and the mother alligator will gently use her teeth to crack the egg to make it easier. After the babies are born, she'll look after them for about three years, and she'll carry them in her mouth to and from the water. And when they get bigger, they'll just ride on top of her. If you didn't like alligators before, you're welcome. In the last 33,000 years, dogs evolved a specific set of muscles that lets them raise their eyebrows, and their eyes themselves have become more expressive and infant-like. Wolves don't have this, so there's a good chance they evolved this as a trick to manipulate humans. And it works. If a dog has had an emotionally negative experience or an overall stressful day, research shows that they will stay up at night thinking about what went wrong. Research also says that there's a positive correlation between oxytocin and cortisol levels in dogs and dog owners, which is basically a fancy sciencey way of saying your dog is as happy and as stressed as you are because you transfer energy. If you can't sleep at night because you've had a bad day, go check on your dog because there's a good chance he might be up too. After 9-11, the rescue dogs were becoming depressed since all they were recovering were dead corpses. The human caretakers would purposely bury themselves in the rubble just so the dogs could find an actual living body and feel like they got a W. Male puppies will go out of their way to let female puppies win in place since they know females will get discouraged if they keep losing, so the stronger males will purposely nerf themselves in place since they know doing so means the games will last longer. You love to see it. So I said that the devil will go ice skating before I ruin elephants. And apparently there's an ice rink in hell, so now I have to do it. Elephants have a second trunk in the form of a 6 foot prehensile penis that they can use to wrap around objects and even pick them up. Male elephants are known child abusers. They go into a state called must which is basically roid rage on a thousand. If they don't get to mate, they'll take it out on innocent babies. They'll kick the babies around, knock them over, and they'll even pick them up with their trunk and then yeet them in the name of sexual frustration. Speaking of which, bull elephants in South Africa have been known to assault rhinos with their penis and then kill them. It's believed this aggression is a result of stress and fear caused by humans because we are the worst things to ever walk the earth and unfortunately it comes at the cost of a rhino's entire way of life and the sanctity of its anus. I mean, how mad do you have to be to a rhino? They may be bigger, but elephants can't process alcohol the same way we can, meaning they get wasted much faster. But elephants will go on intoxicated benders while they'll destroy homes and people. In 2010, 70 elephants got turned off rice beer and proceeded to flatten several homes and take three people with them. Elephants cost 500 obituaries a year and they've been known to trample and disembowel people. And the worst fact of all, they don't really think you're cute and if this was the only thing getting you out of bed in the morning, go back to sleep.